For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Sane Zamini. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna joins me to discuss understanding and defeating state capture. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Does your article not play down the significance of Nkosa Zanadlamini Zuma being defeated in December? Yeah, you know, maybe I'm um, over-exaggerating, but I'm reacting against uh, this idea that once Cyril Ramaphosa, because it's assumed Cyril will be the person, gets it, once Cyril Ramaphosa becomes president, then everything we dream of will reappear, mm. you know, and all that is evil will be wiped out of South yeah. Africa. It will be cleansed, the ANC will be pure, people will no longer buy members, uh, you will, everyone will just pay their VAT, they will not bribe anyone, uh, the Guptas will be turned into law-abiding citizens or they will disappear. And I don't think it's so simple because even whoever uh, inherits the presidency of the ANC, whether it's Nkosa Tlana Tlamini Zuma, uh, Suramaposa Lindiwa uh, Sisulu, or whoever, is going to inherit a divided organization. So whoever is president is going to have difficulty pulling the organization behind them. And you must remember that, as I said in the article, Jacob Zuma will still be president of the country. And Thabo Mbeki, people have a lot of, he's got a lot of people who don't like him. But when the ANC leadership said to him, we want you to step down as president of the country, he acted like a gentleman mm. or had acted with honor in the sense that people didn't have confidence, he stepped out. Now Zuma is not that sort of person. <laughs> See, he, he, he is, he, he on the contrary, as I said in the article, he may well just simply fire uh, the cabinet or fire Sir Ronald Porter. You know, he has on the one hand, um, he's not a small time crook in the sense that state capture is very big. Mm. It's affecting all the institutions of the state. But on the other hand, he has some of the mentality of a small time crook in the sense that he doesn't care about things like uh, uh, the RAND collapsing, uh, junk status, uh, you know, investment being withdrawn. Mm. He's not concerned about these things. What he's concerned about is himself mm. getting what he can get before he leaves by whatever means necessary. And um, he doesn't mind if he leaves the country in ruins and he goes to Nkandla or maybe he goes to Dubai. Uh, so we've got to understand we're dealing with <coughs> someone who uh, isn't concerned with these things and in any case, um, sta state capture can continue, I argued in this article, even if Zuma is no longer president, because you've got people in a number of different places. And in some ways, Zuma doesn't have to be present to say to his PA, send everything that they want to the Guptas. Mm. Already they are doing it from inside his office. They're doing it in Transnet, they're doing it in ESCOM, they're doing it in all of these places. And that is something that I'm sure they can even continue from Dubai in the sense that um, you can devise systems all the time people are having to learn new ways of encoding uh, ways of communications. And if these Gupta leaks have embarrassed them, and they don't seem so worried about it, they've, never, they've not uh, said much. Um, if, they're so, if, if they're not so worried about this, they can go there and find new ways of communication and continue it. So I think people are exaggerating what it means to have Nkosazana Tlamini Zuma 
defeated and what Cyril Ramaphosa <coughs> could actually do. I'm not sure that he could do such a lot. Um, and I think as we uncover more and more of what state capture means, even at the local level, it would be very interesting to know to what extent they've penetrated there, how they've penetrated there. Uh, there's no prosecutions pending, as far as we are aware, in regard to the 30 million going from the uh, Frieda farm in the Free State mm. to pay for the Gupta weddings. There's no s announcement of any investigation even. Mm. So it seems to me that there are a lot of things in place there and several of them pause, they can't just simply go there and fire this one, fire that one. Mm. He may even find, because the ANC leadership that will be elected will not be united, that it will be difficult for him mm. to do some things because he will have such opposition. You know, the ANC is already undermining uh, the DA-led local government in Tswane, in Johannesburg, in Nelson Mandela Bay, and all of that. So it may well be that they are preparing for a number of scenarios, mm -hmm. and I don't, uh, so that's why I said those things. Mm. So you speak of state capture as being an institutionalized system. Is it not far-fetched to suggest that Zuma could continue with the Gubtas, with capture, even after he leaves office, or even from Dubai? And what do we do after all this? Yeah, well, I've explained why I think he could do it from uh, leave after leaving office. You know, the thing with Zuma, his footprints are not necessarily directly there. People are doing things, mm. and they're doing this on the assumption that this is what Ubaba wants. And it gives him what is called plausible deniability. And he can say, look, what are you talking about? Here I am in Dubai, or here I am in Kandla. Mm. And there are people in place at a number of different levels who have been vetted by, no longer vetted by the Public Services Commission, they vetted by the Gupta Commission, and then they get appointed to this, that, and the other. So that is something which I'm not saying for sure that it can be uh, continued, but it seems to me that it's, m it's, it's not just a parallel state. It actually performs the functions of the state, although a person who holds a, an office, who's a director general or a CEO or a minister, may formally make the decision. Mm. The motivation, the impetus for the decision is coming from elsewhere and there's no reason why that shouldn't continue. Mm. So what do we do about it? Uh, what we are now seeing is that the constitutional system that we put in place with a range of checks and balances did not allow for the type of uh, mafia type uh, attack on our institutions and the people who are playing you know, in box, boxing they have what's called the Queensbury rules of boxing they're not playing by the Queensbury rules of boxing the people are playing real dirty. And it seems to me that uh, this thing of mass activity uh, really needs to be looked at carefully. People mustn't ca make exaggerated claims, mm. like they are claiming that they are much bigger than they actually are. They are bigger, big, in the sense of having people turn up at the union building. But what happens afterwards? You have to create a situation where people feel they belong to a new democracy movement, a movement that will restore democracy in South Africa. And they need to be in a relationship. Like the DA can call on its voters. It knows so-and-so is a member, and those members will have checked out who else in that street is going to vote DA, and then they, then they go and pick them up. Now, it's the same with this. You have to know, OK, these people came to the march. They're interested in being involved more. People must go and talk to them. 
uh, involve them in a more formal way. And there are no shortcuts. It takes long. Even if the problem is urgent, you can't uh, push something. You know? mm. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's policy about understanding and defeating state capture.